Hey, Booby, we seeing the youngest go crazy right now, right? And and today or well, this week. It was in the news. Oh, the most murders in two decades. DC ain't never seen this. Blah, blah, blah. Is, is shit worse now uh, than it was before, ever before? Uh, or is this really par for the course? I lived in when it was 400 murders. Right? Shit. I lived in when if you count what they consider the DMV right now, DC, Maryland, Virginia, it might be 700 murders yeah. in a year, right? So, um, actually, you know, I respect all human life. Uh, one is too many, right? Um, but at the end of the day, if we go on by statistics and numbers, I've seen it worse. Uh, but you, but you gotta agree, some about this era is a little different. Is it different because it is the social media? So all two hundred of them we see in every morning on social media. As soon as you get them, you see kill mode, this that there, and it's it's right there in front of you. Pause. Is that is that does that amplify what's going on, or because some about this era do seem a little different? What seems different is that the grandmother, 55, 50 <laughs> years old, she at Fast Eddie's every week. Yeah. Mother, 30 at Rose Bar. And yeah. son outside stealing cars and jacket <laughs> and getting spanked. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the yeah. real talk. Like, just yeah. think about that, right? You can go to the go and see the grandmother. When I was growing up, my grandma was in the house. In fact. You DC, what up? Northeast, what up? East Coast, what up? We international, Ryan. DC, what up? PG, what up? East Coast, what up? We international, Ryan. Shit all over the DMV, they listening to us. Uh, you know, every week I say some different foreign land, but I think we need to address some shit right here at home. And um, I got a hell of a guest to help me do that. But first, let me introduce my sponsors, man. Uh, listen. You've seen them on one of our episodes, or maybe you ain't seen that episode yet, depending on how this shit go. You know, it's the internet. But the cannabis for this episode is sponsored by none other than my man Rob from Mr. Roblado. You can check him out on Instagram, Mr. Roblado, R-O-B-L-A-T-O, man. And also, the funnel, the floating funnel from the Green Circle at, on Instagram, at the Green Circle. Shout out to y'all. Uh, each and every week also, shout out to Tri-State Tricombs and... uh. My man designer Huff with the hoodies and all of that. Shout out to my good man, always taking care of us. Uh, to my left, I got a, a hell of a guest for us, man. My esteemed guest. Man, it's an honor and a privilege, man. Uh, community activist, entrepreneur, uh, DC legend, right? For whatever way you want to look at him, what they say, legend in, legend in three games, like Pee Wee Kirkland or whatever the fuck they say. Shout out to uh, Pusha T uh, in the clips. Should I just say you with the clips? Yeah, we was together over there. Yeah, yeah. See the type of shit I'm talking about? Yeah, we was together <laughs> over there. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Man, listen, community developer, right? Because we say community activists, and right now there's so many people like ambulance chasing, right? So niggas that throw that tag on it quick. But when we talk about community development, that means you helping lay the groundwork to develop these same neighborhoods that you once was a part of, maybe on the other side of it, right? Charles Booby King, how you doing, big guy? I'm all right, yourself? I can't complain, man. All right, listen, you're such a serious dude, I don't know how many jokes I can crack. <laughs> good, man. Good, man. No, I'm just, I mean, really, that's what people don't really yeah, might know yeah, is that you were. think that I'm, you know, I don't know why. I yeah. Mean, if I don't know you, I don't know you. I was raised in the herb when you don't talk to strangers. That's a fact. You know, your mother told you that as a kid. Don't talk to strangers. Uh, now everybody talk to strangers. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's why so much stuff go left. Too many uh, strangers. I, I, I see that. I, um, before we go any further, because I, I think we're about to have a hell of a conversation. I'm going to stop real quick. Each and every week we do a moment of silence, right? So this moment of silence, I think, again, uh, I just want to focus on all the youngest that's dying in D.C. right now. For whatever, I don't play no sides. But I got you on here. We're about to have a real conversation about a lot of real shit. And so I want to dedicate this episode to them. Do a moment of silence. Hey, Booby, we seeing the youngest go crazy right now, right? And and today or well, this week, it was in the news. Oh, the most murders in two decades. DC ain't never seen this. Blah blah blah. Is is shit worse now uh, than it was before ever before, uh, or is this really par for the course? Um, most definitely. I've seen worse. I've been yeah. in this city my whole life. Okay. Um, born and raised here, right? And I can go anywhere in the city. 
Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know that because we got a relationship. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I lived there when it was 400 murders. Right. Shit. I lived there when if you count what they consider the DMV right now, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, it might be 700 murders yeah. in a year. Right. So um, actually, you know, I respect all human life. Um, one is too many. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, if we go on by statistics and numbers, I've seen it worse. Um, yeah. I think that based on the population, as we spoke, based on the population of today um, per capita with 700,000 people and 250 murders, that's what it was at the day due to the nature of the work that I'm in. I yeah. know the numbers every day. Yeah. Um, with 250 murders with 700,000 people, you know, in comparison to when it was 400,000 people and 400 murders. Yeah. Right? Um, those numbers tell for themselves, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm most definitely going to say that I've seen worse, but we have a new demographic of people in, in our town and in the media area. So the outcry is different due to the type of money that's uh, generating and floating through this city. But you, but you got to agree, something about this era is a little different. It's it, it, cause cause listen, we talking about the four hundred. So you, when you referencing the four hundred murders and five hundred, we talking about the eighties and nineties, right? When we was the murder capital, right? Yes. And we are gonna get to that. But but these but these two hundred is is it different because it is the social media? So all two hundred of them we see in every morning on social. As soon as you get them, you see kill mode, this that there, and it's it's right there in front of you. Pause. Is that is that does that amplify what's going on or? Because something about this era do seem a little different. Um, what seems different is that the grandmother, 55, 50 <laughs> years old, she at Fast Eddie's every week. Yeah. Mother, 30 at Rose Bar. And yeah. the son outside stealing cars and jacket <laughs> and getting spanked. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the real yeah. talk. Like, just yeah. think about that. Right? You can go to the go-go and see the grandmother. When I was growing up, my grandma was in the house. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. So it was more accountability. I think what looks different now is that it's more outlets to be seen the clout. people to not even clout just more um information sharing uh, oh, okay. tools now right where if you didn't make the news back in the days i might come looking for you and not even know you got killed yeah right because i'm from uptown and you from over southeast or you from over northeast right yeah. and i don't have that connectivity cell phones wasn't as prevalent right so i just couldn't pick up the phone and call you yeah. right or I ain't calling in your house because I know you don't be in the house. And yeah. I know your family know you don't be in the yeah. house. So if I don't pull around your way, I don't know you dead. Now we see the same rest in peace, especially if it's a popular individual, right? Yeah. Everybody's going to repost that. And everybody is, um, I can't believe you left me. I yeah. fucked up about oh, this you one. You fucked me up, yeah, yeah, yeah. up with this one. Like, he, twin. like he planned on getting spanked, yeah. right? Like that man didn't wake up to plan on getting crushed that day, right? Nobody plans to get killed. Mm-hmm. Right, I don't think that, that no one plans to get killed. Right, mm-hmm. um, even the even the most janky nigga, you know, he he does what he do because he think he can get away with it. Okay, and right, and they catch up to him. Right, we all do what we do because we think we can get away with it. But what happens is you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar, and sometimes that's the end result of your actions. Mm-hmm. Right, for lack of better words. So, um, I just think that back to your question, I think that the social media um, magnifies the fact that. Um, it broadcasts information way faster, um, but the downside of that is we get inaccuracies with that broadcast, yeah. right? We get a lot of miscommunication, a lot of, um, we get a lot of, um, for lack of better words, fucked up information. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? People just jump to conclusion yeah. um, without no facts. Um, you'll hear all types of stories, and, and if you ain't embedded or entwined in that situation, you might fall for yeah, it. You might fall for okay. it. Let me ask you a question real quick. Do me, do me a favor if you can. Tell me, describe to me how you seen DC evolve from when you was coming up as a youngin to where you are right now. You, you don't gotta tell me all the, but just tell me how how has it evolved? Economically, it evolved tremendously. Um, when, and, and people would be mad at people like um Muriel Bowser and um oh shit all these all these different you know relevant current um, politicians, but they don't realize that this was already put in play yeah. years before that when Anthony Williams went around the United States soliciting businesses to come here and give them tax incentives to try to bring revenues here to generate tax uh, uh, money for the city, right? The overall yeah. goal, goal is to get D.C. to a million people. Mm-hmm. That's why they steady building, right? Mm-hmm. If we had 700,000 and this building's everywhere, right? They ain't even fool, right? So um, the economics of D.C., it's really changed. When I was growing up, man, to move to Maryland, you made it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, 
that was like like that was the shit. Like like your family had a few dollars and y'all moved out Merlin. Mm -hmm. Like like you made it. And if your friends still lived around the way, they wanted to go over your house. Yeah. Cause that was like big boy shit. Can I come over your house, man? Yeah. Ask your mother, can I come over the weekend, right? Yeah. Where we didn't have anything. Georgetown was our city center, right? Facts. Georgetown was our gallery place. Facts. If you did, or you went to Tinley Town mm -hmm. to the movie theater, or and it was only a handful of places. Now those places are irrelevant. Yeah. Right? My yeah. I got a 20-year-old son, 19-year-old son, about to be 20. And just into a couple of years ago, he had never been to Georgetown. Mind you, I, I did 13 years. Now I come home and me and him having a conversation. I'm like, man, you ever been to Georgetown? He's like, nah. So I take him to Georgetown, and he turned all his buddies on to it. Yeah. So they start going down there, flashy, right? Yeah, yeah on, just on some other shit other than gallery place. Yeah. Right? Because we know the gallery place ain't the, the safest and the best place nah. for a youngin'. Nah. And I, I had those conversations with my son that um be mindful, man. Don't make me have to hurt somebody. Yeah. Because I will hurt somebody about you. There's no secret about that. That's yeah. all I got, and I'm all he got, right? Yeah. So um I'm I'm big on that, but to see where it came from, it came from um, the most successful people in the cities was drug dealers too. The most successful in these people was entre entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right? There wasn't $19.7 billion floating through the city a year back then. Yeah. Where this year, the, the, budget, the budget for D.C. is $19.7 billion. Total? Total. That, well, that's D.C. government budget. It's $19.7 billion. And um, even when you start talking about police and, and things like that, right? What we got to realize is we can't police our way out the issues that we got right now. We got to address those issues internally, and we got to get a hold of our own community to a degree. Um, Park Police just got $459 million for this year. D.C. Police got $505 million, I think, and, and Capitol Police asked for $840 million. That's over a billion dollars in police, and we got 250 murders. To go with her. Where the man, money going? Don't ask me, man. Listen, I I got a saying. Give me a hundred million in any one of their budget, and let me go to Area Hood and ask for people what they need. I guarantee you I can stop a lot of this shit going yeah. on. Give me a hundred. Yeah. And I ain't going to steal a dollar. Give me a hundred. Tell me I can spend it how I need to spend it. And I guarantee you I can go to all these hoods that still exist and ask people what they need. When I say what you need, I ain't talking about no bullshit. If it got a moat in it, it got to be something that's making money, mm -hmm. right? So that you can, I'm going to teach you how to fish so you can make your own money. Right. So I think that um, growing up, coming from there to here, um, where we at now, it's endless opportunities. Yeah. It's so many resources in this city that didn't exist when I was growing up. It's ridiculous, especially for the youngest. They got so many resources, they just won't now, come and get them. Right now, it's crazy. When, was it less resources? So There was no resources. So this is how you ended up doing 13. So I wound up doing 13 because I grew up in an environment where, man, I was an entrepreneur. Right? I just but not chose, this kind, the, the other I kind. just chose to, 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 to be an entrepreneur with illegal activity, right? Mm -hmm. But um, that was the way of life. I, I just had a, con a conversation with Tony Woods. We was on the phone about an hour earlier talking, and... Literally, um, me and him both can, can attest to, and we about the same age. Okay. It's just a year difference. That I had no positive person that I could say I wanted to be like him when I was growing up. Right? But as of now, you got a Tony Woods. You got mm -hmm. a me. You got a Salvis, right? Mm -hmm. You got all these dudes. You got a you, mm -hmm. right? You got somebody that you can say, man, he ain't jamming, right, but, right, he, right. but he doing that yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. It wasn't none of that, right? Everybody I knew that was around me that was older than me, they was they was doing they was engaged they in illegal do. activity. Who who was the DC got legendary legendary street niggas right? They they make movies about all these up New York this and that. A lot of them New York niggas couldn't hold a candle to what was happening right here in DC during the crack era, right? Who was some of the guys you came up looking at when you talk about you ain't had no positive role models? Who was some of the ones that you came up looking at that was legendary here in the DC area? So. You know, legendary is defined in my eyes by how you see a person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody might tell you that a person legendary, but to me, he might be a sucker. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But I grew up under some dudes who come from out of my media community um, right. who was well-known and well-respected, um, like them dudes on that Newton Street case. Okay, right? yeah, Like yeah, the monkeys yeah. and them. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I grew up in that, in, that, in that community right there. And that community was a... Uh, I grew up in a residential community where our families came from something. Yeah. They owned those houses, right? So we understood what it was like to live in a house as opposed to living in public housing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, it was a, man, my whole neighborhood was flooded with, with dudes that was doing it. Mm -hmm. It was, it, my whole neighborhood was flooded with dudes that was doing it. Like literally, it was doing it. Like mm -hmm. I watched niggas go 
buy a car today, crash that joint, and go buy the same car mm-hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> it wasn't no, they wasn't no insurance. These was kids because mm-hmm. you got to think how old these people were at the time, right? Right. right. Even if you look at like Tony Will Sr., he's sixty two. He did thirty four years. Yeah. Just think they about that. And he was yet, and he yeah. was the big homie. Yeah. So that means that everybody under him was 21, 22, 18, 19. Those stories that you hear is legendary. One they million. was teenagers. Yeah, one million. Yeah, they was teenagers, right? They right. was teenagers. So like grasp that reality, right? Right. right. Um I I like like I just for me, what was legendary for me, the legends for me was me being able to watch the game and see dudes do what they do and pick some pieces from everybody. Mm-hmm. I picked the piece from everybody, right? I give a man his respect, right? But I believe that all men are created equal. If you can do it, I can do it. Right. Um, some of the dudes that they consider legendary, in my opinion, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with some of their actions or respect some of the things that they did. I got you. Politics. Not politics. Principles. Opinions. Okay. Right? That's Same that more. person's opinion. When you bring up certain names, yeah. and he was like that, but when you dig deep into his currency, he did a lot of fucked up shit. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these dudes did a lot of fucked up shit, but they gonna only show you the glamorization, just like everything else. They gonna yeah. show you the glory story. They, ain't, they don't talk about the bullshit. Yeah. Now, that's real. Let me ask you another... You kind of just touched on it. How you end up getting 13? Like, what happened? What led to... What, Cause I, that's where we was going. What led to if you don't mind talking about? I, I don't it. got no problem with talking about. What led to like um, I, I wound up catching a, a, a drug in a gun case. I had a nine twenty four C using the current firearm doing drug trafficking offense. The possession with intent to distribute, and um, I was at federal court mm-hmm. in D.C. I wound up going to trial t- twice over there. I had a mistrial the first time. It was um nine three my favor. Mm. The uh, prosecutor chose to retry me. And they came back and they deliberated for three days and they wound up finding me guilty a couple of days before Christmas in 2003. Um, I was jamming. Yeah. I was jamming, jamming. And it's crazy because I was just talking to one of my homies when I was um, somewhere working in a, uh, in a facility. I went to the facility and one of my homies who I grew up with worked there and he brought it up. And he was like, man, my little brother bought a Porsche when he came home. And I was like... Nah, that's a bad move. He's like, nigga, I know you ain't talking. You had a vet. You had this, you had that. And they was like, he was like, man, I remember I was working at Giant and you pulled up in a motherfucking vet. And I'm saying to myself, I mean, this motherfucker's struggling. Damn. Like, so, like, I done had, I done had all that shit. S class, his yeah. house, cars. You feel what I'm saying? I went to jail like 22. I had everything before I went to jail, right? Yeah. Because I was advanced. My mind always been. Let me figure this out. I was taking trips and shit back then. You feel mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Before it was a GPS when niggas was using MapQuest. Mm-hmm. You print the shit out and then you drive and you and you read yeah, the joint, yeah, right? Yeah, and then yeah. I throw the shit away once yeah, I get there because yeah, I know how to get back, yeah, right? Yeah. But um, that's what I went to jail for, like getting get, getting to some money. But that wasn't my first encounter with with the uh, judicial system. Talk about it if you can. Um, I've been involved with the judicial system since I was a kid. Right. Um, Man, I, I didn't been locked up for everything from homicide to drugs. Okay. And anything you can think of in between, with the exception of um no no, you know, I don't I ain't fucking with no kids. I ain't taking yeah, no yeah, nah. none of that type of shit. Right? When was the first when was the first charge? Um, first charge two months after I turned thirteen, I I was arrested on a homicide case. Okay. Um the next charge after that was a, a gun joint. Um next joint after that was a drug joint. Then the next joint after that I had two attempts. Um, I had two attempts and I was out murdering on them two attempts as an adult. And after I got out on, on them two attempts, I wound up getting the joint dismissed and damn near a year to the day from my time, the time I got out on the two attempts with a year from the day down into I caught the two attempts, mm-hmm. I wound up catching the fair case that I came in. Damn. Did you, did you, when you caught the case, let me ask you, did you feel like, you know, cause I hear some people say like when they, when they know, when they know they, 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 you know what I mean? It's one of them jokes where. I, I, you know, of course you you went to trial, but maybe you like ah. So when they find you guilty, was it one of them joints where you kind of? Cause it sounded like it was a rough, like it was choppy for you. Was was you not relieved, but like ready to just go ahead and sit down and do the time, or was you hot? You know, devastated, heartbroken about it. Uh, n- not heartbroken, um, at all. Yeah, I, I take a yes and I take a no, right? That's real. Like like. Like, like, I grew up in this shit. Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. Like, I got um, an older brother. We don't speak right now, and I don't think I'll probably never speak to him again because of some of his actions, right? Yeah. But I really grew up in this shit. And what I mean by that, when I was in the second grade, he was in the sixth grade. Mm-hmm. 
this before crack hit, he was he was they was selling PCP. He was a lookout. He used to get paid fifty dollars a week. Yeah. Um. I ain't. I wasn't heartbroken. I was more so devastated and disappointed in the judicial system because I really believed in it. Yeah. Um. I went to trial because I went to the law library and I started, you know, um, you know, researching law and studying my case and shit and realizing that, hey, I was violated. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't saying I wasn't breaking no law. I'm just saying that the way that y'all arrested me, I was violated. Right. This situation. So, yeah. In yeah. this situation, I was violated. And I believed that the judicial system was going to deliver justice. Right. And I found out that, man, um, I found out that, man, that's, that's some bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's top of the line bullshit. What was the what was the worst part of the thirteen? Um, shit. For you, just knowing that when I caught my case, my son mother was pregnant. Shit. And that I wouldn't be able to be out there to be a father to my child. Um, outside of that, pretty much everything else that came with that with that time. You was. I, I, I was I was equipped and built for. I, I had been groomed. In, yeah. in, in the judicial system and in the penal system as a juvenile. Then when I got to the adult system, that you know, um, it was no different. I seen all the same niggas in the adult system I was there old kill with. What was the sh what was the turning moment, right? What was the turning moment where you go in, like you just say, you really was kind of numb to it. This something you've been conditioned for, right? Did something happen while you was in there in the middle of that, or did it happen afterwards? But where was the turning po point where you was, quote, unquote, reformed or started to evolve into who you are today? I think I started to evolve probably about 2009. Um, I, had, I, I had already been to Big Sandy. I had already been to Lee County, Cumberland, and Gilmer. I was, at, uh, I was at, um, in Elkton. I was okay. in Ohio. And, and it's a book that changed my life. Um, I started taking the class as a dude from up up this way named Charles Hall. He was locked up for real estate. Okay. And um, Charles was teaching the class. So when Charles was teaching the class, he had some copies of some pages out this book. Yeah. Uh, the book is called Seven Highly Seven Seven Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen M. Covey. Okay. Um, I read those couple pages and I, was, and I pushed up on them like, man, what this book at? I want to mm -hmm. see this book. And I read the book and the shit just it just got my wheels to turn and right. Um, it, it, it's a book about, about, it's, it's like a, it's like, it's like an aha moment. It's a paradigm shift type book. Yeah. Um, I started reading that book, man. And reading that book changed my life, but I read some books before that. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Solve that brother blood in my eye. Mm -hmm. Um, the autobiography of Malcolm X. I read, um, a lot of other yeah. books, but I think that that's the one that really made me just start, Viewing stuff different because it's like exercises in the book, and when you look at it, it make you think. Um, right. Sometimes it's, it's it's like you ever seen that joint where they got a a, a number nine, but one person standing on one side, and yeah. they say, it's a six, and the other person say, no, nah, that's a nine, and they saying based on where you standing at, it is what it is. But well, both of y'all are right. Yeah, that shit changed my perspective about life. That's how you get to the violence intervention, the all of this type of shit. Right, you talking about highly successful people. That's what made you. That's what got me here. How, bro. how did that be the one? Not Malcolm X or not this or not that. It's because the Malcolm X is a story, right? And, and we all heard that story before. Right. Um, we've seen it. Yeah. Right. Um, it's been told a thousand times, and we we know what to expect with that. Right. With this. It gave you a scenario. I give you one of the scenarios in there. It say, man, in life, you got. It's, I'm gonna give you two scenarios. It says, in life, you become in the world. You're you're dependent, right? With kids, your your mother feeds you, your father feeds you. They walk you, they change you, and then you become independent, right? right? Then after you get your independence, you grow. And then a lot of people stop at independence, right? I got my independence. A lot of relationships fail because your girl say, I'm independent, and you say, I'm independent. Well, y'all shouldn't even be together, right? Y'all should be interdependent. Interdependent meaning that both of y'all working towards the same other. goals, helping each other get to the same goals, and y'all helping each other. But instead, we live in a society where everybody's independent. They're competing against each other. Right? Right. That was one of them. And then it was like, man, in life, it's, it's usually win-lose. Mm -hmm. And in the book, it had a scenario where they broke down. It's like, listen, man, it's win-lose, win-win, no deal, compromise. When you start thinking like that, it make me look at situations different. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going into these communities where I'm engaged with certain individuals 
who motherfuckers be scared to death of, right? Mm -hmm. I get up on them and 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 you know it when you see it. Yeah. Right? So when I start talking to them, I ain't talking to them niggas about no shit from 2005. I'm talking to them niggas about shit from right, right now today. Yeah. Like, nigga, I know who's spanking shit right now today. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking to you about, nigga, I heard your name. Let me holler at you. Yeah. This, and, and, and whether it's true or not, they know that I got some type of commonality to them, so I got their attention. Facts. But I also try to bring those scenarios to, to you know, to the table with yeah. the win, 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 lose, because I've, I've had to use those myself. In my own life, you feel what I'm saying? I've been in a situation where I've been shot, I've been paralyzed from my waist down, and I've had the opportunity to rectify those situations and have relationships with the people I was beating with and have a relationship with the dude that shot me. He ain't never go to jail. What? We don't do that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? No, nah, street law, street law. Yeah. Like, like I said, I was raised in this. It's not the glorified, but if you going to pick a side, stay over. You got to. Right? And even right now today, it's certain things that I can't do, despite the fact that I'm a civilian. Yeah, but civilian or not, once you sign up for this, you this this blood in, blood out. And I don't say that like like you like said, glorifying it. I'm not saying you gotta commit no crimes, but once you once you jump off the porch and say, this is because when you're making the money, when you don't fucking bro, all of that shit, that's the that's the spoils of this shit. So you don't get to switch up now when it's inconvenient for you and say, well, nah, I'm a civilian now. Nah, cool, but you still can't do what them what they do. They never was even in it. So you can't, once you was in it, you can't go against that, in my opinion. Let me ask you real quick. Are you religious? Man, I believe in God, and I believe every religion got some truth. Um, everybody's story deviates somewhere, right? Um, if you're Muslim, you know, you believe that Jesus was a prophet, right? right? Um, you believe that Muhammad was the last prophet. If, you, if you're Moorish American, you believe that the Honorable Mel Drew Ali, right? Yeah. Um, if you're Christian, you believe in cer certain forms of Christianity, that Jesus is God, right. and Jesus was the son of God, right. right? So, like, it all deviates somewhere, but, like, man, if you ask me, I believe that everybody got some... Everything was a fact until you get somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, the man-made shit. Yeah, and, 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 and you know... Um, even when it comes to Islam, I got a lot of Muslim friends, right? right? And I respect the fuck out of them. Like, they're my right. men. Like, right. I got niggas that die about me right. as Muslim and vice versa, right? But, you know, especially when in prison, one of the biggest thing was, man, the Quran, the only books never been tampered with by man. Man, listen, don't do that. Stop repeating. Yes, there you repeating something somebody else said, right? Because there's no way of verif verifying that. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to say something that's fucked up, right? It's not fucked up, though, but I, I'm glad you said it. I'm Muslim, right? I don't believe Muhammad was the last prophet, right? I don't. I, listen, this is just my belief, right? Everybody's in touch with theirs, right? I don't believe that. If that's what you believe, that's I respect that. I don't believe that. I believe there's been many prophets since then. I don't think that it just stopped two thousand years ago. It doesn't make sense. The ideology of that that whole concept was self-serving to somebody that wanted power. I believe the ones that ain't doing something for power, that's who I believe. That's why. So I find, you know, when they, they got the Nation of Islam versus the Sunnis. Sunnis, yeah, right. I grew up on Farrakhan. What you want me to do? You want me to not listen? This is, I, he's speaking English and he's speaking to me. He's speaking to me. He know me. Clarence 13X, Malcolm X, they know me. I'm a black man in America. So, yeah, no question. I love my brothers. That, you know, I got this on for Palestine. I love it. I love, I, like you say, I'm a lover of life. But when we talking about what I believe and I got to, you can't tell me to cut off people that look like me who raised me as mentors that didn't even know me. I, I grew up listening to Farrakhan. I just think that, you know, religion is one of those topics that's, um, yeah. that it, it, it'll be a universal divide um, when it comes to certain belief systems until the earth ends, right? That's just the way it is. Yeah. Because it was here years and thousands of years before we got here. Gonna be so, here. you know, unless somebody fall out the sky right now and right. say this is what it is, people won't believe it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And I, I ain't never met nobody that came back from the dead and told me shit yet. Did you have any mental health, PTSD, depression? You doing 13 years in there. You got a son that's out on the outside. Can't be, can't be easy on you. I asked you about the religion because I want to know how you cope. And still cope, because if you talking about this shit since you're 13, homicide since 13. Um, cope. My coping mechanism in prison was, um, I ain't going to say it, was, it wasn't hard. Mm -hmm. Physical wasn't hard. Like, 
I'm well respected and well known, yeah. no matter where I go. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and you know me, so you know I travel around, especially the United States. Every city I, t- I touch down there, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the hood, I'm in the jungle. Yeah. I'm with, I'm with the real, you know, from yeah. that, from wherever I'm at, right? Um, I love Chicago, um, <laughs> literally, um, touch down, but. I'm very respected and I'm very respectful. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't an issue. As far as my my, my son, um, from a financial standpoint, I was a good. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Financially, he didn't need for anything. If he asked for it, I made it, I made it happen. Um, whether it was my money or me having, you know, I got dudes I fuck with that's that gonna, gonna make it pop for me, right? right? Um, I just think that just getting through it, waking up every day, and it become a routine. Um, even in hindsight, looking back right now, I don't feel like I did 13 years. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I just don't. And even when I met in my life right now, I don't feel like I did 13 years. Because I came home and lap niggas. Yeah. I lap niggas three, four times. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But I ain't the loud one. You know me, I ain't going to make a whole lot of, mm-hmm. lot of noise. Mm-hmm. Lot of, I ain't going to make a scene. Mm-hmm. I don't care about clothes. I don't care about none of that shit. Like, bro. Like at the end of the day, when you get undressed and get in the shower and lay in the bed, we the same. Amen. Right? It, it, that's at the end of the day. Listen, don't throw your life away about don't throw your life away about no motherfucking materialistic shit. Yeah. Um, a lot of us throwing our life away about materialistic shit or go off and do a bid and come home and you can't even wear that shit no more. That motherfucking Cuban link, when you come home 20 years from now, man, that shit ain't nobody be wearing that shit no more. Don't you know you got niggas doing 25 years, been locked up 25, 30 years mm-hmm. about an Eddie Bauer coat? Yeah. Think about that. They don't yeah. even make the motherfuckers yeah. no more. Yeah. So to go back even to current, niggas robbing for Canada Goose, Moose Knuckles, Mackage, right. um, all this shit, right? right? 20 years from now, they feel like a goddamn fool. You ain't even going to be able to wear that shit no more. It's going to be yeah, irrelevant. Exactly. Yeah. So like make it make sense. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's a and I, and I dropped that jewel in that piece because for whoever see this, it might spark something in them, right? Mm-hmm. And make them think like, yeah, I'm tripping. Cause it might be a young to see this, we bracing shit and be like, I'm tripping like shit. I'm bracing niggas for coats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go to jail for 20 years about a motherfucking coat. I got a young nigga, I got a, a homie from my hood. They gave him 75 years, bro. Mm. They gave him 75 years for a fucking pager. Mm-hmm. A, a, a jersey mm-hmm. and thirty dollars. What he had pre- prior shit? No, he had I, he went to trial. <laughs> Man, listen, they I brace, tried. they brace some niggas, yeah. and they brace some niggas they thought was older, but they were some little young yeah. niggas. But they, really they don't shit. know they just look older. They got that shit on back then, jersey and shit. Yeah. Brace them for that shit, man. That man got seventy years. I got him investigated when I came home. We didn't gave back thirty of the forty. We yeah. working on the forty right now, right? But the the moral story, we came in at about the same time. Yeah. Childhood friends. So he been in jail right now twenty years. Yeah, about. A jersey, the niggas don't even Nothing. wear jersey. Nothing. Pager, you can't even find a fucking yeah, pager. Obviously, and thirty five dollars, people don't even carry cash in their pocket yeah. no more. Yeah, you 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 do a lot with the returning citizens. You do a lot with the guys that still locked up, right? Side question, you don't gotta answer if you don't. What you feel about this Meek Mill situation? Just hit the news, right? That you got um, the rapper D One was on swaying them, talking about how Meek and Jim Jones, Rick Ross. They, you know, they stay 40 years old, plus they still talking about the same shit, killing niggas and ordering hits, this and that, right? Then he say, Meek, you supposed to be the face of reform. I sold 1,500 of your shoes to prisoners with your shit because it said reform on it. And now you on the song talking about you ordering hits. Meek said, we do both. That was his response to it. Um, Hey, man, take them at face value. Yeah. Whatever, the, whatever nigga said, you believe it into that yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Nigga yeah. tell me a kill, I'm gonna treat him like yeah. a kill until yeah. you show me he ain't trying to kill him. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? <laughs> you tripping like shit. <laughs> if you don't take it at face value, shit, you, your shit be on the sidewalk somewhere. Because on, on one hand, listen, if and, I'm. And, and, I, and I respect talk that. that right? talk that I respect there. that. I had a contract with Reform. Okay. I was DC ambassador for Reform. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Right? I didn't even know that. Literally, if you look in my bio, you'll see it. Reform actually followed me. Okay. Right? I had an ambassador joint to do um, Louis Reed. He was mm-hmm. the, 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 the chairman of, of, of um, Reform at the time. He stepped down. He doing some other stuff. Now he out of uh, Connecticut, out of Bridgeport, dude I fuck with. Okay. But I didn't been to their office in New York. They got an office here in DC. They actually moved. It's Cross Street from Union Station now. Yeah. Um, 
Hey, I think I think that I think that at the time that you know that he was on on reform, and then the fact that he still is on reform, that's uh, um, I think it served his purpose. Yeah, right. I don't think nothing negative came out of him being on reform. Got some eyes. Yeah, to yeah, it. like brought attention to it, and they've been going around the United States to help push um, probation reform. Yeah and, yeah, and and stuff like that. So like you know. Um, if we gotta look at the body of work with his face being on that, was it a failure or was it a success? Yeah. And in my opinion, it was a success. Yeah. Right. Moving forward, do you keep his face on reform? That's between them and reform. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If they got a problem with it, right? But the stuff that he did get established for reform, with the help of you know Michael Rubin, Jay Z, mm -hmm. and all of them, right? Um, literally. You know, it was positive. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say that nothing negative. And a lot of people had an opportunity to be heard. A lot of things was uh, moving, a lot of moving pieces. Even when you start talking about the employees of that organization, yeah. they was given an opportunity to have a livelihood. So mm -hmm. do we really say that something negative came out of reform? And, and you know, and, and for me, I heard what D1 was saying. Cool. Because we got to understand the shit we talking about in our music do make a difference, right? Young as whoever, it make a difference. Ain't no way of anybody who even know anything about music, fuck rap, know that music influences you, right? If you fucked up, you sad, if you happy, whatever. Cool. But also, this is my relevance, right? I'm talking to a certain demographic that hears me when I say, if you fuck around, I send them niggas to your door. They like, oh, I can relate to that, right? So now when I'm telling them, do this and do that, some good shit, reform shit, I got their ear, I got them. But if Meek was to start talking about praise God, I mean, not to say he can't say praise God, but if he just was, oh man, I'm against be smoking. I'm against, yeah, niggas would, an audience. That'd be right. it. It's 8 billion, billion with a B, people on this earth. Yeah. 8 billion people. It's 195. Eight? 8 billion. Okay. It's 195 countries. It's 24 time zones. You a smart. Right? Man. Just think about that. 8 billion people. Yeah. It's an audience for every motherfucking thing. Yeah, that's it. I can fuck with you. And just because you one motherfucking monkey don't stop no show. At all. D1, you know, I don't know who you is. I respect whatever whatever it is he yeah. said or whatever. Because, you know, I don't keep up with that wild shit. Um, I deal with too much real shit. Yeah, like, Every yeah. day I wake up and read about homicides. That's the email I get every morning about homicides and shootings, right? Then I get on the call and I have a call where I talk and they report out to me about homicides and shooting. And then I do a deployment call about homicides and shooting, right? If it's 250 murders in this city right now, I've talked about probably 200 of them, mm. maybe 175 to 200 of them, right? So, you know, um, I don't really keep up with the goofy shit. I don't even turn my TV on. Yeah. Anymore. I'm just being honest. It's like yeah. my TV for decoration and company. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? What's the origins of how? Um, your your uh your business my, my helping others with life. Helping others with life came, man. I said I wanted to do a nonprofit. Me and my men, we all we do a lot of giving back, um, mm -hmm. low key. Mm -hmm. Before it became popular, mm -hmm. like since I've been home, man, I didn't provided so much shit to people. But you would never know. You feel what I'm saying? Whether it was writing letters on motherfuckers' behalf or whatever. But um, the name came. I was asleep one day, just woke up and was like, man, I'm make this don't be called helping others with life. Yeah. I had to say how. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fucking started the yeah. paperwork called attorney, man. Get this shit going. Immediately. And she got, she, you know, she whipped up everything. I got my EIN number and everything for it. Then she did the paperwork for me to get my 501c3. Um, they, the IRS approved it maybe about five or six years ago. And I've been all to the races ever since. Um, I really don't push it as much as I should, but uh, I, I serve in so many different capacities. It's in the same light as that, that I don't feel like I'm doing a disservice to my own brand mm -hmm. because I am my brand. Mm -hmm. How do you, 200 murders out of 250 you know about, right? How do you decompress from that shit? Um, I'm a jogger, man. You was just paralyzed, now you jogging. Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a jogger, man. Um, I do a lot of running. I run a half, I ran a half marathon this year. I ain't been running consistently as I used to. Mm -hmm. I did a half marathon about March of this year. Um, but I do a lot of jogging, man. Um, that's my therapy. One thing I've learned about people, they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to come and run with you. That's too much for them. <laughs> and then trying to talk and run. I don't even talk and run. Yeah. So most definitely, <laughs> listen, I'm going I'm to weigh your ass off. You start trying to talk and weigh yeah. you, right? Yeah. So that's that's my therapy, man. And I see, I see a therapist, right? Okay. Um, just to have general conversations about life, um, the way I view life, the things that I see, the way that I see them, because I know I don't have all the answers to everything. So, you know, I find a way to try to get some of the answers or get things out of my head, right. have those conversations. And I'm surrounded by a, a great foundation of people. 
people that's in my life, man, I love all the people in my life. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Um, mm -hmm. I talk to them on a consistent basis, and I know it's genuine and authentic. Yeah. I know um, I can pick up the phone with them, and we can have a conversation. And whatever I say to them, it won't be weaponized against yeah. me. Yeah. Right? And vice versa. Because you can't even have conversations with people nowadays. Mm -hmm. I could tell somebody something nowadays, or y'all could tell somebody something nowadays, and when they get mad, they throw that shit in your face. Yeah, yeah. Man, you ain't say that when your ass was broke. Mm -hmm. You was out here fucked up. Oh, you ain't had no gun. You had to hold my gun. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you scared of shit. Like, like, bro, like, yeah. niggas like, wild. Like, you know, niggas gonna use Yeah, this. yeah, like, Niggas always use you yeah, against you. Yeah, like, that's, so that's what I mean niggas by, like, I got a great group of people around me, yeah. bro. <laughs> so that that's a big help for me, too. Because uh, some of the people that's in my life, they in the same field yeah. of work that I'm in, it, even if not directly, indirectly. So they understand, and I can have those type of conversations with them where, where they understand what I'm talking about. Was it hard to come home and transition to being a civilian? No, nah, not for me. I'm just I'm just being straight up with you. Yeah. Um, I made a decision and was like, man, fuck it, this is what I'm going to do. You feel what I'm saying? And just like anything else, I treat this shit just like the just like the drug game. You wasn't tempted to get back in the mix when you came home? Man, um, temptation will always be there. Mm -hmm. Um, everything is a phone call away if you're mm -hmm. the right person. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But um as an entrepreneur, right? This is what I would tell anybody coming home. If you choose to break the law, right? If you choose to break the law, man, don't make that shit a a, a, a lifestyle. Make yeah. it a, a exit, you know, an exit strategy. If you read business books, every business book tell you what is your exit strategy for your business. Are you going to start a business, sell it? You going to grow it? You going to pass it on to your family? Treat that the same way. Um, but if you come home and you trying to work, right? Be patient and understand it. Treat that shit just like the street, nigga. Mm -hmm. You wasn't a man. You start off with an eight ball of a wholesale, yeah. and then you worked your way up, and maybe you wind up getting up to some bricks, yeah. nigga. You gonna be an eight ball nigga yeah, at the yeah. job? What the <laughs> fuck, like, yeah. like, nigga, you gonna be an eight ball nigga at the job? Yeah. And you doing some fuck yeah. boy shit? <laughs> I mean, listen, I ain't, I ain't lying. Somebody had a motherfucking job at Jam when I came home. I made seven dollars and fifty cents an hour, bro. Overnight stock clerk, yo. <laughs> listen, man. You know what I mean? Nice. I went to the bathroom, looked in the mirror, I was like, man, I just had them birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had that work. I, yeah. I, I, man, many a days I looked yeah. in the mirror and was like, man, if niggas could see me now, they, they wouldn't have believed it. Chickens shit. on aisle three and I, shit. <laughs> man, listen, I'm, I'm just spaghetti <laughs> aisle, so, but 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 I'm gonna tell you something. This the hustler in me, right? Yeah. Overnight, um, night captain wouldn't show up for work sometimes, miss sick, whatever. I tell everybody, come on, let's go upstairs, and get our shit, so we can do this shit. So when the people they start coming in on them, mm -hmm. they like, man, who told? Now nah, he told us. Them people trying to make me a nightcap. Now I was like, man, this shit ain't no money, man. I'm yeah. doing this shit to get home visits yeah. from the halfway house. But he got me yeah. fucked up. Yeah. They talk like John and Korea. Yeah. No disrespect to the people at John. I, I fuck with John. John. Yeah, shout out to shout John. To John. Listen, way. listen, that's not a career for me, right? Like, nah, hell nah. I'm bigger than Al Five, homes. Like, you got me fucked up. Man, they talk about how they been there for 20 years and they didn't work there. Man, listen, not me, buddy. Yeah, no. Listen, man, these hands was meant to count. Billions, yeah. maybe even billions one yeah. day. Yeah. Look at your problem. I got box cuts on my motherfucking yeah. hand. <laughs> Out of my hands and knees. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> but it was, you know, my mentality coming out was I was making 23 cents an hour in the feds. Shit. $7.50 cent an hour is way better. Yeah. Right? Um, how do you complain when you come from that yeah. on, in, in real reality? Um, I think too many people come home and they forget where they came from. They forget that nigga... Everybody got to be fly, but you was locked up wearing used drawers. Mm -hmm. You was locked up wearing used socks, used mm -hmm. T-shirts, used uh, khaki outfits, right? You in a motherfucking used sheets. Yeah. All of a sudden, you too good for certain shit, man. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Nigga, I seen them, man, nigga. I seen y'all squat for for the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, nigga, you can't put on a you can't put on a pair of American Eagle jeans. But Every you wear visit. A, you wear a Russell sweatsuit. Yeah. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Every you visit, you got coffee, and bro. I'm free. And I woke up. As a young nigga say, and it might be some legs. Yeah, for sure. Man, you tripping like That's shit. The best man, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here. Yeah, yeah. You yeah niggas, about? niggas, niggas be talking, man. Fuck the man. They could take me. Hey, nigga, I like being free, nigga. Man, listen. I love that shit. I ain't gonna lie. You ain't no pussy in there. I love this shit. Well, listen, I, I hustle. So I hustle yo. now the same way I hustle when I sold drugs. Yeah. Man, let's if that bag right, I'm coming. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? 
Yeah. You call me on Sunday, nigga, fuck church. Yeah. Use my, my language. Uh, but like, how many birds you want? Yeah. How many pounds you try and get? Yeah. Listen, man, the preacher can't get his until I get mine. Yeah, yeah for sure. For right? Sure. For sure. I can't go to the mosque and tip the brothers until At I all. get mine. So when dudes keep that same mentality and don't get caught up on me, I got to have the weekends off. Mm. Man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> now you need the weekends off, yeah. but you hustled every weekend when you were selling the motherfucking Knicks. Facts. Yeah, Nick's selling Nick's every week, and Nick got 10,000 Nick's. He's trying to get all the <laughs> fuck one out of here. 10,000 Nick's, you're trying to get the motherfuckers off over, over the whole weekend. Yeah. And that shit's some garbage. Yeah. <laughs> what would you tell yourself now you done, okay, you got a 20-year-old son. When you went in, your son wasn't even born yet. What would you tell yourself, your younger self, from your perspective now? Man, take that money, get the fuck on. Yeah. Get a job um, with your hustle mentality, you're going to be all right. You feel what I'm saying? But I created a lifestyle that I couldn't support um, no way but in the street. Um, I had a mortgage. My mortgage was 2000 I had a house in Simmons Acres. Yeah. I had three apartments. I had an apartment on Bass Place. I had an apartment around Benning Park when they first renovated them, Johnson. I had an apartment out uh, Rosecroft Mews off um, Brinkley Road. So that's 2000 on my mortgage. It's 1000 on the apartment out there. That's like 500 and 500. That's 3,000. Yeah. Uh, um, that's 4,000. Just them, and just that's not including no, no water, no electric, no HOA fees, no every day going to the club seven yeah. days a week, no popping bottles. Motherfucker, yeah. overall hit overhead every month when I got locked up and started thinking, I'm like, wow, well, nigga spending that 20, 000, 15, 20 dollars a month. You feel know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck, I, I don't know how to shoot basketball. Yeah. Fuck, I'm gonna get 15, 20 <laughs> from a month. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, ain't no rap. so like I wrapped myself, I locked myself into some shit that was unrealistic, unsustainable. Yeah, yeah. that shit wasn't realistic. Like that, like people don't even live like that. Entertainers can't even entertain and, and, and maintain that. That's why they go broke. Yeah. Let me wrap it up. Look, last question for you. You done seen this shit from a few different angles, right? Uh, on both sides of it, whatever you want to say, right? Trying to stop the problem, and you was the problem, right, at different points in your life, right? What you think the hardest part is about young is making that transition? Some people glorify the jail shit. They don't care. They, you know, some people you could say they reckless. The youngest really don't know no accountability, and they don't really know what's in, what's waiting for them. What you think the hardest part is? You said it was a seamless transition for you, but you know enough to know that a lot of niggas it ain't seamless for them. Um, environment. I think. What you mean? I, I think that the transition, especially for youngest, is environment, right? Um. They can't really go nowhere. They can't work nowhere. Some of them need, they're going to have to leave this area in order to survive, right? Um, they're going to have to go somewhere else and, and start life somewhere else. It don't make them a sucker. It just make yeah. them smart. Smart. Um, yeah. The environment. I just talked to a young man three hours ago, shorty active, and he was like, man, I want different. I say, what's realistically different for you that yeah. you want? Yeah. Because I say, I can't put you in a McDonald's or a Wendy's. Because if a nigga walk in there, you're a free play. That's it. A nigga going to spank you. If you're going to be at work with the junk, you're going to yeah. crush a nigga, a nigga going to crush you. Yeah. So you got to be, for those that's that far gone, um, that environment piece is, is, is important and imperative, making sure that, that, that they can get to an environment that's safe. Because um, yeah. you got some of these youngers that don't, they don't even realize the Tilly Town was Tilly Town because they never been from over fucking Northeast. Yeah. Like, I'm dead ass serious. Like, yeah. I, I, I told some youngers to meet me from 21st. Listen, man, meet me. I, I was negotiating the situation they had for them, right? Meet me at Union Market. Yeah. All them niggas ain't even never been to Union Market, man. That's Shit Fifth Street. street yeah. You on 21st Street, that's 16, 17 blocks over, bro, and you've yeah. never been to Union Market. So just like, think about that. Yeah. Right, and they like, oh my god, like I yeah, didn't even know this thing. was here. Yeah, but you drive up and down Florida Avenue every day. Yeah, and you don't even know that this shit here, right? So I think that that, that the environment, man, um, you gotta change the environment. And I've seen um, evidence of opportunity um, outside of environment for those who can remain, making sure that there's an opportunity for them, right? A sustainable opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I took two dudes from two different hoods that was beefing with each other. And um, both of them make about 100K a year right now because of me. Um, I got them both jobs. Um, I got them both jobs. They got two jobs apiece, yeah, right? Yeah. 
And they both work in both the same places together. I need to send my resume to you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, so literally, right? Um, I walked them into a situation, yeah. and 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 they doing good, and like they doing better than the niggas that's still outside around their way. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I realized that giving them that opportunity was a, was a life changer for them. Yeah. One of them just went on his first cruise the other day. Man, call me from all the cruise. I'm doing this, uh, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Look at this, y'all, man. Yeah. Go and holler at your girl, man. Yeah, I love a cruise. Yeah, man. <laughs> it, man you know, but yeah, the environment and opportunity. Yeah. Um, economic stability. Um, everything that's being done that you see, a lot of this shit is being done about money. What they consider as money is no money. Um, they rob me for pocket change, coats and shit, right? That shit ain't even no money. Like, real talk, just think about that. Like, I asked a younger man, if you got 5000 off a nigga and you got locked up when you went to jail for five years, you went to jail for $1,000 a year. I think you could have made that at McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's pay $15 an hour, $17 yeah. an hour. Just think about that. So when if you $17 an hour and you say $170 yeah. times 10, right? I mean, 17 times 10 is $170 times 40, right? That's That's... 340, 680 every two weeks. Nigga, you could have got that motherfucking thousand dollars in a month. Easy. But but you gave up another 59 months to go to yeah. jail for five years. Five right. Years. So I just think that talking to them and having them really understand um economics and economic investment and really talking to them and using terminology that they understand because they don't understand a, a lot of stuff that's being said to them. So I talk to them youngers in their in their in their language. Mm -hmm. Man, remember that nigga gave you that KD? Yeah. And he told you to jump 35, but he gonna need 40 because you gonna pay him on Friday. Yeah, back that's interest. Mm -hmm. So you go to the bank, right? Yeah. And they tell you, man, we're gonna give you five thousand, but you gotta give us back fifty five hundred. Yeah. It's just like that KD, but it's more money. Yeah. They be like, oh, all right. And then they start equating that to shit. Mm -hmm. When they go in, they be like, so how much you, in their mind, they say, how much you going to charge me on top of that KD? Yeah. Because the reality is the world is ran on credit. Yeah. Right? Sure. Um, I grew up thinking that I had to pay for every motherfucking thing. In cash. Yeah. I, and, and the reality is that's not the truth. The truth is nobody owns shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody owns nothing, right? Mm -hmm. um, everybody has bills. Some people just got more money than they need for their bills, yeah. right? So it's not a burden. Mm -hmm. But every Jay-Z, Meek Mills... Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, your mother, your father, me and you, we all got bills. It's a bill. Yeah. You pay this motherfucker every month. Facts. We all got bills. So, Facts. like, nobody is without bills. And you still a bill when you die. Somebody got paid to put your ass in the ground, yeah. right? So, like, you can't even die for free. Yeah. So, if you can't <laughs> die for free, you know you can't live for free, literally, right? Yeah, so, you know, I think that that's, that that's the, the reality of for these young yeah. They're really giving them an opportunity and... um. In, 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 the, in the environment, environment. environment and opportunity, because what good is rehabilitation for a young man saying the juvenile facility? He's going through these classes, and you take him home and put him back in the house where his mother fucked up. Yeah. He got five brothers and sisters. They hungry. He the oldest. Yeah. What the f you ain't create nothing. nothing. That shit went out the window. That shit you was kumbaya in the joint, man. We hungry in this motherfucker. Yeah. Gotta go get it. So. Yeah. What you got coming up? What you got? I know you got some different workshops and different. You do consulting stuff. Tell tell me how can they link with you? How can they? How can they? You know, it's a lot of people that might need a mentor, or need somebody, or 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 I, do you want better? Who might really want to do the work, but they don't know who sh who they should link with because everybody's saying they do this and everybody. It's a lot of it's a lot of that. How can they link up with somebody who so, really out? No, my Instagram booby six one seven b o o b i e six one seven. Or helping others with life on Instagram, um, both of those Instagrams. Mm -hmm. My website, howdmv.com. And um, man, if you, you jump on them channels, you hit me, man. I usually reply back. Like, mm -hmm. like man, I done met so many people from social media, and I was one of them dudes came home, like, man, fuck social media. Y'all tripping. Y'all putting y'all pictures on that dumb ass shit. <laughs> like, I was lunching like shit. I came, y'all keep putting all y'all pictures on that shit. Y'all going to jail, nigga. <laughs> Niggas, y'all all going to jail. All these putting cases on all you bitches, right? But um, in due time, I, I, I wind up, of course, getting a page, yeah. and it was private. And then Tony yeah. Hood was like, man, you got to make your motherfucking page on private. Nigga, you doing all this shit. Can't nobody see yeah, can't it. See Who it. the fuck is you hiding from? I can't see it. And I was like, man, you make sense. <laughs> He's like, nigga, you hiding. You hiding the good shit. I be like, you breaking the law. I be telling rappers that they got to they pay, but it's your shit private. 
Now nah, I want him to follow me. Nigga, that shit ain't going to work, fuck bro. Him, man. That shit ain't going to work, nigga. Ain't not only that, like, nigga, like, listen. F- usually yeah. people follow after they... You buy clothes after you see yeah, it. Yeah, you you see don't it. go in the store in the fucking yeah, store. There ain't no lights nigga. on, and you, you just real, start yeah. feeling shit and yeah. say, man, this shit right here feel like it might yeah. be some good-ass yeah, material. Yeah, get you this. get outside, that shit some cold Ugly bullshit. Shit. You just bought some yeah. Jordan ass. <laughs> <laughs> all bullshit. Yeah. You just bought all bullshit. Yeah. And sold you some motherfucking, some old motherfucking Jabos or something, man. Yeah, nah, you know, nah, shooting they self in the foot. But, um, you know, I gave you my, my hookup, my link, um... Literally, man, I don't really know what I got coming up, man. Yeah. My phone rings so much, man. I be all over the place, man. I know I'm gonna do something with um a school, um, um, Garfield over on Minnesota mm-hmm. Avenue. I think that's the name of it. No, I don't think that's Garfield. That's it's or the old or. Yeah, I forgot the so I gave um, out 100 bikes with my nonprofit a few years back. I okay. uh, bought 100 brand new bikes and distributed them over three schools for the most improved students. I don't ever want to touch a fucking bike again. Yeah. Um, I yeah. picked all them bitches up myself, me and my men. Took them yeah. off the truck, put them back. Shit sounded cool, yeah. but we thought about it. We ain't thinking all the way through until it was time to move all them dumbass bikes. But not the least to say, man, the kids was happy. But um, I gave them pajamas mm-hmm. some years ago. So the teacher, one of the teachers over there, my man wife, she reached out to me and was like, um, the kids, I got some kids that need pajamas and socks. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, how can people donate to your 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 nonprofit? Um, you got you, a cash app? Yeah, I got a cash app, man. Them, come on, you know what, man? Shit, me and put this on hoods and news, cause that's what niggas need to see. At the end of the day, put your all these niggas. Okay, y'all street niggas, y'all this, y'all getting all this and, money. And and and, and, and that's and I know what you about to say, come right? On, talk to him, man. Listen, before you buy that bottle of motherfucking Ace of Spades, Slim. Well, or send me 20. Man, man. yeah, shit, nigga, dub or something. You know, for real. Shit, like, kid, nah, for guy. real, because listen, them gonna be the same youngest that's gonna probably be in your neighborhood. Yeah, they don't bust your motherfucking yeah, window. And, and, nigga, and, and, and like, real shit. talk, like, listen, they were sharing bikes at the school. Kids didn't even have bikes. Them hundred bikes they were sharing. No, they they okay, had okay, it, like okay. they come for recess. Like we yeah. work with bikes. They had like one bike and they were sharing that joint doing recess. Yeah. Like that yeah. that shit was unbelievable. Like I was like, man. This this can't be for real, but uh, my 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 um cash app and this is my nonprofit cash app man. Listen, if y'all want to know where the money go, I post every time I get rid of the money and get the stuff out. Yeah. So it's dollar sign how H O W L nonprofit N O N P R O F I T. Like literally, um, you want to donate, donate. I appreciate it. You know, all donations are welcome. Um. But um, no matter what happened, that shit gonna pop anyway. I'm gonna make it happen anyway. Yeah, like yeah, if I gotta pull up on a nigga before he walk in the club and tell him get me, <laughs> like, hey Slim, you got some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got, oh, got five thousand. I'm gonna need two hundred for some pajamas. Yeah, yeah we got you some. You know what I'm saying? Now you got forty eight hundred. Yeah, it's some good luck. You yeah, know what yeah. <laughs> forty eight hundred, some good luck. But nah, like That's for good. real, shout out to all the street dudes I fuck with, for real. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without them. Yeah, right on so many different levels. Um. Whether it's squashing the beef, whether it's donating, whether it's me connecting them to a resource, whether it's me yeah. helping them transition from the streets and get a job, man, shout out to them, man, because I'm them. Yeah. Um, I don't care how much I'm over here, I'm you. Yeah. And um, I'm always rooting for you. And, and I'm always trying to make a, a way for them dudes, right? Because a lot of dudes want a way out, but they don't got nobody to help them walk walk that path to Facts. get to the other side of the Facts. fence. Facts. High thoughts. Man, I'm on it, my nigga. I, um, I can't say it enough uh, for you to be able to tell your story, ain't hold back, and like you just did, offer an olive branch to whoever might need it, whoever might see it. This ain't no, you know, with the good thing about social media, nigga ain't got to go uh, publicly and say, hey, I need help. Nigga slide in your DM yeah. or shoot you a text, right? So... I want to say thank you for even coming up here and, 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 and telling the story and talk. Somebody get the door for me. Uh, but look, my high thoughts for that. Look, of course, like I say always, follow us on uh, the High Thoughts Podcast. Follow Floyd World. Uh, listen, Culture Media Network. Uh, we drop usually on Tuesdays. I mean, Wednesdays. Uh, subscribe, follow us, all of that. Look. Niggas been here before. I know niggas think, oh, this shit new. This shit ain't new. Everybody been. Niggas been here before. Find you somebody that been there before where you, where you walking at or where you trying to go. Link up. Figure some shit out. The old shit ain't working no more. The shit ain't fair. You see these gunner on world tour. Right? The, shit ain't, the shit is fucked up. 
Figure something out before I figure you out. Each and every week, Floyd 118 presents Hot Thoughts, Culture Media Network. Booby, Floyd, salute. Say you want to go and be a superstar, but they don't even know or wonder who you are. Say you want to see your life up on the movie screen, but they don't even know or even show your name. They say, how you going to go? You want to go far? How you going to go? You got to go hard. They say, how you going to go? You want to go far? How you going to go? You got to go hard. Say you want to go and be a superstar, but they don't even know or wonder who you are. Say you want to see your life up on the movie screen, but they don't even know or even show your name. They say, how you going to go? You want to go far? How you going to go? You got to go hard. They say, how you going to go? You want to go far? How you going to go? You got to go hard. thing I ever did, ever since I've been a kid. Promised I would share my soul. Never said I let it go. Every day I'm waiting for something, but I ain't never know. Everything I'm looking for cooking. Up right here in my own Had some problems in my home I ain't nothing different though No, you probably listen Reminiscing how y'all did it though I got plenty stories Listen, shorty, you should listen up Promise I ain't giving up All this pain ain't meant for us All this shit is dangerous Anyway, we see it From Congo to Sudan To the city where I be sleeping Petty problems We I saw them as brains linking Listen, this for my This problem we ain't thinking It's a fact this shit is trapping We better refrain speaking Find your balance in this malice We gotta remain even Even when we down We gotta remain Main believers, if you know I would have known this battle ain't even even seasons. So before we go, tell us a little bit about We are culture. Nothing moves without us.